viruses are obligatory intracellular microorganisms of immense biomedical importance. The history of mankind is replete with episodes where microbial infections had assumed horrific proportions and wiped millions of productive human lives out from our planet. With the discovery and development of light microscope, the hitherto invisible pathogenic bacteria were gradually imbibed into the realm of visual perception. Elucidation of their life processes, pathogenesis, prevention and treatment of microbial infectious diseases gradually became a reality by virtue of the lifetime achievements of gifted scientists like Robert Koch, Louis Pasteur, and Alexander Fleming. Nevertheless, viruses with their submicroscopic dimensions and intracellular sanctuary continued to elude human endeavor against them. During the second half of 20th century, knowledge about viral replication and the molecular mechanisms involved therein gradually paved the way for development of therapeutic agents selectively toxic to the viruses. The early antiviral agents like 5 iododeoxyuridine and trifluorothymidine damaged host cell DNA along with viral DNA and were deemed unacceptable for systemic use. Then, the discovery of anti herpes virus nucleoside analog acyclovir, for which Gertrude Elian and George Hitchings were awarded a Nobel Prize in 1988, marked the beginning of a new era in the history of medicine. Our antiviral arsenal is enriching itself ever since, and a plethora of effective antiviral drugs currently exist. The advent of HIV epidemic in the concluding decades of the last century left no scope for overemphasizing the need for new antiviral drugs. However, the bone homie of early success did not last long. Viral resistance against pharmacotherapy emerged soon and shortly became an issue of growing concern. Therefore, the necessity for rational therapy of viral infections and development of novel antiviral drugs is rising continuously. All of this require an understanding of the mode of viral replication, mechanisms of antiviral drug action, and resistance. Viruses cause a number of human diseases like influenza, viral hepatitis, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome caused by HIV, etc. As they are obligatory intracellular parasites, so they utilize the host cell machinery itself for their replication process. And these very replication steps are the potential targets of the antiviral drugs. Although antiviral drugs are quite effective, but viral resistance against them is also an important problem in modern medicine. We shall first begin with having an overview of the viral replication process. For our descriptive purpose, let us assume that there is a host cell and a pathogenic virus in the vicinity. So the first step will be attachment of the virus to the host cell surface, followed by penetration or entry. Then there will be removal of the outer coating of the virus or capsid. After this, the viral nucleic acid or the viral genome will undergo replication and transcription. And for this purpose, it will utilize the nuclear machinery of the host cell itself. Depending upon the type of virus, viral DNA or RNA will undergo replication. And then there will be translation or synthesis of viral proteins necessary for the formation or synthesis of the progeny virion. The progeny virion will then be released into the extracellular milieu. So if these are the steps of viral replication, let us now see what are the potential targets for the antiviral drugs. The first step or attachment and entry itself can be prevented by classical entry inhibitors like Maraviroc. The process of uncoating may be inhibited by amantadine. DNA replication can be inhibited by acyclovir. Protein synthesis can be inhibited by protease inhibitors like saquinavir. Assembly of the progeny virion may be inhibited by interferons and the final step of release of the virus from the infected cell can be inhibited by neuraminidase inhibitors like oseltamivir. 
Now with this background, let us start to proceed for classification of the antiviral agents. Antiviral drugs are basically of two types, the non-antiretroviral drugs and the antiretroviral drugs used for treatment of AIDS caused by HIV. In the non-antiretroviral group, we have drugs effective against herpes like acyclovir, cancyclovir. For influenza, we have amantadine. Against viral hepatitis, entecavir and lamivudine are useful. There are certain other agents like for respiratory syncytial virus, we can use ribavirin. For antiretroviral group, we have the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors like girovudine, stavudine, lamivudine or the nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors like tenofovir. For non-nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors, we have nevirapine, efavirange and delavirdine. Protease inhibitors include indinavir, sacuinavir, ritonavir, etc. Viral entry inhibitors include enfovirtide and maraviroc. And viral integrase inhibitors include raltegravir. Now, we shall proceed for the mechanisms of actions of the antiretroviral drugs. We will take examples from some of the classes. So first of all, we have acyclovir, which is useful against herpes virus. So for this, let us take a host cell with the herpes virus inside. Now, acyclovir is being administered. Thereafter, the viral thymidine kinase will act upon this acyclovir to form acyclovir monophosphate. This first step of phosphorylation will be followed by further phosphorylation with the help of the cellular kinases and the active moiety of the drug acyclovir triphosphate will result. This acyclovir triphosphate will block the important step of DNA replication of the virus. During this process of DNA replication, an important enzyme is the DNA polymerase. Acyclovir triphosphate will inhibit this DNA polymerase. Acyclovir triphosphate itself will also be incorporated into the growing DNA strand, resulting in its premature termination. The acyclovir triphosphate DNA complex will also inhibit the DNA polymerase and further DNA synthesis by a process called suicide inactivation. Acyclovir resistant herpes viruses have been encountered. Now what is the mechanism of acyclovir resistance? As the first step of phosphorylation of acyclovir is mediated by the viral thymidine kinase, so in the resistant strains, there will be a reduced synthesis of thymidine kinase and the first step of phosphorylation will not occur. In mutant viruses, the DNA polymerase may also be present in an altered form and this altered form of DNA polymerase is no longer susceptible to inhibition by acyclovir. Anti-influenza virus, Oseltamifir. There is this host cell with the influenza virus inside. For release of influenza virus from the host cell, it is necessary to destroy certain receptors recognized by hemagglutinin. And for this purpose, viral neuraminidase is the enzyme necessary. With the help of neuraminidase, hemagglutinin recognized receptors will be destroyed and the influenza virus will be released from the infected cell. Now what does oseltamivir do? Oseltamivir when administered, it targets this neuraminidase enzyme and prevents the destruction of hemagglutinin recognized receptors by means of inducing certain conformational changes in the neuraminidase. So the release of influenza virus from the infected cell will not be possible. As for oseltamivir resistant influenza viruses, they harbor an altered form of this neuraminidase enzyme. This is not susceptible to oseltamivir. Entecavir, it is useful against hepatitis B viruses. So we have this host cell with the hepatitis B virus inside. During the process of viral DNA replication, again hepatitis B virus DNA polymerase is essential for many steps like base priming, reverse transcription of the negative strand and positive strand of hepatitis B virus DNA synthesis. Entecavir when administered inside the cell, it will be phosphorylated and this phosphorylated entecavir will prevent all these activities of the hepatitis B virus DNA polymerase. So in resistant strains, by mutation, an altered form of DNA polymerase will be there, which cannot be inhibited by entecavir. 
Rivavirin useful against respiratory sensitial virus as well as HCV also. We have this host cell with respiratory sensitial virus inside. During the process of viral mRNA synthesis, an important step is catalyzed by the cellular inosine 5 prime phosphate dehydrogenase. Rivavirin, after intracellular phosphorylation, inhibits this step. Another important step is the GTP dependent 5 prime capping of the mRNA strand. Rivavirin will also inhibit this particular step. And Rivavirin can also induce certain lethal mutations inside the virus. Rivavirin resistance has been encountered only rarely. Some cases of Synbase virus have shown resistance against Rivavirin. After this, we shall discuss about drugs used against acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS caused by HIV, which is a cause of worldwide concern. So for treatment of AIDS, we have the antiretroviral drugs. But before a discussion about the antiretroviral drugs, we will require to have an overview of the process of HIV replication. An important target of HIV is the CD4 T lymphocyte. So here you can see a CD4 T lymphocyte with the HIV virus in the vicinity. As you can see, there are certain glycoprotein receptors on the surface of the virus, namely GP160 and GP41. They will interact with the CD4 receptor resulting in entry of the virus inside the cell followed by release of the viral RNA into the cytoplasm. This RNA will now form DNA with the help of the viral enzyme reverse transcriptase. Here you can see the RNA and the complementary DNA. The RNA will now be destroyed by the RNA's enzyme and DNA dependent DNA polymerase will form another strand of DNA, a complementary strand. This DNA pair will now travel to the cellular chromosome and will integrate with it with the help of the enzyme integrase. In this state, the virus may remain latent for a long period. But upon activation of the cell, viral structural RNA and viral mRNA will be formed. mRNA will now translate into viral proteins and they will assemble to form the progeny virion. This progeny virion will migrate to the cell surface acquire envelope and be released into the extracellular milieu. There are certain other steps necessary for maturation of the HIV virus. This can also be inhibited. Now we shall see what are the potential targets of antiretroviral drugs. The first step or entry itself can be inhibited by entry inhibitors like enfovitide or maraviroc. Reverse transcriptase can be inhibited by nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Integration can be inhibited by integrase inhibitors like raltegravir. And viral maturation can be inhibited by protease inhibitors like saquinavir. Now we shall have a look at some of the individual drugs. So first of all, gidovudin, the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. There you can see the cell which is infected by HIV. Inside the cell, HIV will utilize its enzyme reverse transcriptase for synthesis of DNA from the viral RNA. When girovodin is administered inside the cell, it is phosphorylated into girovodin triphosphate. Now reverse transcriptase will incorporate girovodin triphosphate into the growing DNA strand, followed by premature termination of elongation of the DNA strand. Girovudin resistant strains of HIV have been experienced. In these strains, reverse transcriptase is changed because of certain mutations. And this altered form of reverse transcriptase will have no activity upon zirovudin. And so these strains will be resistant to zirovudin. As this type of resistance can also confer resistance against other thymidine analogs like stavudin, lamivudin, etc. So this type of mutation has been termed as thymidine analog mutation. Next, the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor or nevirapine. Here, there is this HIV infected cell and the virus is replicating with the help of the enzyme reverse transcriptase. When nevirapine is administered, it will inhibit reverse transcriptase by allosteric inhibition. The functional site will not be affected. So in case of nevirapine resistant HIV, 
there will be an altered form of this reverse transcriptase, which is not susceptible to inactivation by nevirapine. So, these strains will be resistant to nevirapine. Next, the protease inhibitors like saquinavir. Now, during the process of viral maturation, certain larger proteins like GAG and GAGPOL gene products will have to be cleaved into smaller proteins to form the mature progenivirion. For this purpose, certain proteins will have to be cleaved by protease enzyme and these smaller proteins will form the mature progenivirion. When protease inhibitors like saquinavir are administered, they will inhibit the protease enzyme. So, this process of maturation will be prevented. So, in case of protease inhibitor resistant strains, the enzyme protease will be altered and this altered form will not be susceptible to saquinavir and the protease inhibitors. Entry inhibitors like maraviroc. To understand the mechanism of action of maraviroc, we shall have to have another look into the process of viral entry inside the host cell. As you can see, there is another surface glycoprotein GP120 present on the surface of HIV. This GP120 interacts with a co-receptor CCR5 present on the host cell membrane. And this will make the entry of the virus inside the cell possible. Now, what does Maraviroc do? When Maraviroc is administered, it prevents this interaction between GP120 and CCR5 and arrests the process of entry of the virus inside the cell. Maraviroc resistant HIV have been encountered and in them, another strain of virus is selected. Instead of CCR5, GP120 can also interact with another co-receptor called CXCR4. Maraviroc is unable to inhibit the interaction between CXCR4 and GP120. So even in presence of Maraviroc, HIV can enter the host cell. There is another possible mechanism of resistance. Even in presence of CCR5 and CCR5 specific strains, the GP120 itself may undergo some conformational change. And this altered form of GP120 is not susceptible to the actions of Maraviroc. So even in presence of Maraviroc, such strains will be able to enter the host cell. Next, the integrase inhibitors like raltegravir. We have already discussed the process of replication of HIV and have seen that viral integrase is essential for this step of integration of the double-stranded DNA into the host DNA. This process of integration can be inhibited by integrase inhibitors like raltegravir. Raltegravir resistant HIV have been encountered and they process an altered form of integrase enzyme which is resistant to the actions of integrase inhibitors. Now we have discussed about the mechanisms of different antiviral drugs actions and their resistance. Now we shall have a look at the process of development of resistance. For this several theories have been postulated. It has been stated that in a mixed population of viruses, both sensitive strains and resistant strains coexist. Initially, whether resistant strains arise out of mutation or they are present from the very beginning is a topic of controversy. But in a mixed population of viruses, as both sensitive strains and resistant strains are present, so when antiviral agents are present in the environment for a long time, the sensitive strains may be killed and the resistant strains may remain resulting in propagation of resistant strains and formation of a colony of resistant viruses. How? Let us see this process of emergence of resistance. The phenomenon we have discussed is called uh, phenomenon of selection pressure. Here you can see that before selection, in a mixed population of viruses, some of the viruses have very low level of antiviral resistance and some have high level of antiviral resistance. Now, when the antiviral agent is applied and it remains for a long time, that is for a prolonged period of administration of antiviral drugs, the sensitive strains will be killed. Now, the few resistant strains which were present uh, there in the mixed population will have all the environmental nutrients for their per user. 
initially they were very few initially they did not have any clinically significant effect but after selective propagation of these strains the final population will be a population of drug resistant viruses reports of antiviral resistance have been obtained from different parts of the world for example oseltamivir resistant influenza virus is a cause of worldwide concern reports of resistance against lamivudin adepovir telbivudin and entegavir were obtained from different parts of the world when lamivudin is used for 5 years the resistance level may go as high up as 70% now how can we get around this problem some possible solutions have been suggested for example large scale community based use of antiviral drugs must be restricted to prevent exertion of selection pressure upon a mixed population of viruses adequate measures must be taken to prevent spreading of viral infections to non infected hosts antiviral drugs must be used only under medical supervision and their over the counter sale should be discouraged hospitals and healthcare sectors should adopt proper antiviral policy and last but not the least research and development of novel antiviral agents must be encouraged having all said and done what conclusions do we arrive at viral infection and consequent diseases are of major concern globally antiviral drugs are effective but emergence of resistance is also widespread and quite alarming judicious utilization of antiviral drugs and continuous research are warranted in the field the effort said is far from the full account of what is there in this boundless region of antimicrobial chemotherapy but here we have discussed very briefly about the different mechanisms of antiviral drug action and their resistance thank you mm-hmm.